Hello again. In this video, we're going to be installing the Novak Cable Shifter Conversion Kit on a Grand Cherokee ZJ. Warning, this is going to be a long video, but there is a lot to discuss, so let's get started. Things you need to do, you got these arms that are up here. You got two arms. Um, I just took some channel locks and vice grips. You peel them out, and you got this bracket here that sits up on the onto the transmission. Now, right here is a 15 millimeter bolt, and it has a uh, flange, uh, welded flange nut right here so it can't move out as you're wrenching it out. On the back end you got a bolt and a nut, forgot what sizes they were but I know one, I believe the bolt was standard and the nut was metric. Once you get all that out and you move on to the top. Now to take off that one bracket you gotta take out these bolts right here. Pretty difficult to reach because you can't just peel back the carpet up here after you take off the center console. So what I did is I took the center console off. Uh, there are some other videos on that. It's not that hard. You got uh, six screws holding it down, and you can pull it off uh, without taking your shifter off or the bezel right here. Now this piece right here, it forms around to the front along this edge right here, and you got a few screws you need to take out, and you just slightly pull it out of here, work it down, and. You might not have to pull it all the way out like I did, but you have two screws behind this, these right here, and you got to pull this back to take out the screws right there. What I'd recommend doing is instead of just pulling the entire thing out like I did, which was a big pain, just hold the plastic up here and kind of shift it around as you pull the carpet back. Before you can do that, you need to take off the uh, footrest on here. Now the cover, I just took a flathead screwdriver, you peel it up a little bit right here, peel it up here, pull the cover off, and you have two 10 millimeter nuts, one here and one here. Once you take those off, then you can remove the footrest. After you do that, start peeling your carpet back, then you can get to the bolts that hold that in there. The only reason we're doing all this is because Novak gives you new brackets. This one that sits on the transmission, and this one that mounts to the body right here, we give you all new brackets and new arms and all that good stuff. Or it's actually a table, not an arm. Yeah, I forgot to mention, for the seat belt right here, that rolls down here, you have a big bolt that is 13 sixteenths. And it's going to fight you the entire way. It's slow coming off because you, you don't quite have enough room to use a ratchet wrench on it. You have to use an opened end and just go over, over, and over until it's out. I also recommend you take your seat out, otherwise you're not going to quite have enough room. you got two bolts on the front, two on the rear. Get your socket wrench set and you can remove them. Now, warning, the two back ones, they like to snap off on Jeeps, especially these old 90 Jeeps here. Uh, just the, bob the bobs of the seats are like wicks. They just soak up all the moisture and they like to go right to the head of the bolt right there, no matter how much WD-40 or PB Blaster you use. More than likely, they're probably going to snap here. You're going to have to drill and tap it. Well, three of them snapped. One came off. But, that's alright. I believe we can throw all this away now. We just put the new arm on the transfer case for the Novak cable shifter. And, as I said before, this a lot of WJ parts are in here. And this was the original arm. This, this one, is the this, ZJ conversion. I'm sorry, yeah, the ZJ, yeah. but this is the WJ, the WJ transfer case with yeah. that shaft with on it. the ZJ it's conversion. one reason yeah. why we had to also make that spacer because it has a different length, <laughs> bless you, a different length sensor. Anyway, this fit on there just fine, but the new one from Novak, it did not fit. But then maybe the WJ has a little bit larger arm. So what I did was, I should have videoed this before, but before I put this bolt in here and the arm on, I stuck this flexible washer behind there and all I had to do was file off a little bit of that crown you can see that shape on that piece right there so any of them go back but and it wasn't much it was like maybe 30 or 40 thousandths that's all it needed the crown on this piece or no, the actual case actual actually like ground a ground on the 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 shipped bar coming out of the case okay so and rather than grind on the arm because if we do you know, later on, whatever, if you grab one from an XJ, whatever arm, it'll fit it now because it's just a little bit, it'll fit on, it fits on really well with this one. And that one was, that one was kind of tight too. 
but this is really tight. I'd rather have it that way. I'd rather fit it just a little bit so it's not a, you know, it's nothing to get snow back. I think they did a great job. Um, but uh, that right there, just snow going in, you may have to file on that. And I just protected my case so I didn't hit it with the file with this. And we got a really nice tight fit on there and there's there's no slop or no playing that at all. So I'm real quite pleased with it actually. I just used this file and just filed on it and followed the contour. Of the, it's a little bit of a radius. It would be a very large radius, but a short piece of that large radius. So. Okay, now we have this mounted. The next thing that we're going to do is mount the body mount itself. These There's four holes in the original. I mean, this, this factory hole is here. So this bracket will only go one way. You can't put it on backwards or upside down because the whole pattern is not symmetrical. It's going to go just like that. And these will tighten up on here and give a pretty rigid pretty rigid bracket without being too rigid and transferring a lot of the vibration through the body because of these rubber mounts and these brass inserts will tighten up and just put the squeeze on it and hold it where it needs to be it's a good idea I like them they're, um, they're like I said they'll isolate the vibration and they seal the hole at the same time these are very much like what you see on a roof rack um, on I know that my Suburban had the very same kind on it, and I think the Jeeps do too. You can see how it shapes itself out when you pull it down, just snugging it up. It's on that one there now. Where is it? There it is. You on the top one now? Okay. Watch it pull down. And that's how it holds it in there. Pretty cool. Unless you got really long arms, this is going to be a two-person job. I just use an Allen and at the end of a small ratchet wrench. Uh, snug it up all good, and we move on next step. Well, with the transfer case on, we it's still a little bit low. This bracket on the Novak shifter actually takes up... I'll back out in a minute so you can see it. Anyway, these two bolts on from your transfer case or what's used to hold the Novak shifter cable. So and it goes on just like this. One there, one there. Doesn't leave as many threads as I would like to have holding the transfer case, but I'll lock them down and we'll see where we end up. But it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Directions are not hard to read if you know what you're looking at and turn yourself around the right way and all that, but uh, a video would definitely be much better. <laughs> okay, we have the Novak system installed, but like a lot of a lot of these systems, they're just not quite right for my application. If there's a, a bastard unit, I always get it. So we're gonna have to make a couple little mods to this system here. Still not gonna run Novak down. They, they make good products. The quality of the components is is really high <laughs> and I've got uh, one of those rare ones that just is a pain in the ass and it's uh it's got to be modified we're gonna take this one here the top one see it's, it's got a little it's, it's too much of a, a U it's really a sharp radius and putting everything in a kink right here it's almost an S so we're gonna raise this one if you can see we're gonna go up about an inch and a quarter and on the bottom one, we're going to go down an inch and a quarter, down this way to take that S out of it. We're also going to move it uh, probably a little bit further away from the drive shaft, which will also make me change. Oh, sorry. Also make me change the connection here. There's nothing wrong with the connection they've got. It's really strong. And in probably 90% of the applications, it'd be what that's what you want. But since I want to get my um, everything away from the drive shaft here a little bit, I'm going to use an aircraft rod end. It's um, on this side, and I'm going to run a bolt through the bracket. I'll show you what it's going to look like when I'm done. It'll be similar to what they use up top, just a little bit different. And I'm going to make it a pretty strong aircraft rod end, and or some people call them hive joints. But uh, we're going to do that, and I'm making the brackets right now. 
So I got my center to center lines that I needed and I've made my cuts on most of the bracket. We're just gonna cut this part right here. I had this laying around the shop and it's already got like a bed liner coating on it. I'm just gonna drill my holes, cut it and drill my holes like I want it and smooth it all up and put more of a, or like a rhino liner coating on it. So it Actually move the center line to center line can be an inch and a quarter more. So I'm going to go an inch and a quarter up on the top one and an inch and a quarter down on the bottom one and get the bottom one a little more angular so it'll be a smoother radius and not as tight a radius to make the um, table operate a little bit smoother. And it, one thing I could say is that if I have like a four inch lift on this deep, that angle would probably be about right since the fixed side that goes to the shifter won't move and if you, you uh, space the transfer case down to get your angles right on your drive shaft or maybe a 6 inch lift you just know that fit would be probably about perfect but since I'm always doing something a little bit different we're not doing a lift on this Jeep that's going to be more of a street, street, street and foul weather Jeep and then we make some modifications I don't mind Alright, from the top we've got the arm all reinstalled using the Novak kit and we're going to demonstrate right here the, the clicks that we've got and the positive um, engagements that we've got. Go ahead and grab it and pull it. That's all the way four low. There we go. That's four wheel part time, full time, neutral, four low. There we go. It's not as easy as I've seen some people like um, XJs and yes. you know where they can uh, do it with one Jeep. finger. Bleep and Jeep, yeah. But our fitment was entirely different. I mean there's just there's just no comparison to this and the XJ or even the LJ for that matter. But this uh, being the 5.9, being the bigger transmission, I don't know if the housing's any bigger or not, but we had some issues with fitment and the radius of the arm, I mean of the cable. If I use the stock bracket which is here and then put it in this bracket which is here, you can see my radius is four inches up and down. Can't tell that by looking at this, but believe me, four inches. That puts a four inch radius in this cable, which is a lot. So what I had to do, and plus we couldn't get enough stroke. There must be a difference and this, the length of this arm and the placement of the ball or the, where the hole is on the ones that have two, four, two transfer cases instead of two, four, nines. Because with this one all the way out, I mean, with, with the um, ball and socket in the position where it's supposed to be, you couldn't get enough stroke out of this arm moving to get it to engage the transfer case all the way through the stroke, through the sockets. So we had to extend the arm here to get enough of a swing radius this way, which, which gave us probably about another three quarters of an inch. We, did, we extended it there, and then we moved this bracket. You can see, try to make it where you can see it. That's the original hole. That's where I had to move it. So I took some quarter inch metal I had laying around and cut it, bored my holes. I think seven eighths roughly, a little under seven eighths between five eight and seven eight and move that and I used a big bolt here the reason I use that big bolt was I can use that one bolt and lock it down real good and it's not going anywhere this bracket here to get the radius as much of a swing as I could get and get the radius as wide as I could make it and get the spread from here to here to get that spread wider since I don't have a lift I tagged on to the original bracket that Novak provides and I dropped down three and a half inches to get this on par with the arm, which is straight across. That was um, that was what I had to do on this Jeep to get it to work out right. And it took a couple of days, and it took some milling, it took a little bit of lathe work to make the spacers, and a little bit of mill work, um, lots of cuts, drill press. So if you have a 5.9 ZJ, 
and you want to go with a cable, just know going in that you're going to have to do all this work. You're going to have to make your bracket here to get this more in line with the extension that you have to put on here to get enough stroke. And you're going to have to drop this down to clear everything over here and get the radius right. Now I've stuck this bolt right here. This is the bolt that holds your one of these cables up there. I'm not sure which one that is. But anyway, there's the original bracket. I took it and sandblasted it and got it nice. And then I used the I just used a long bolt here with a rubber hose on it to keep the cable itself from the Novak kit off of that sensor right here. Because that it was gonna put too much pressure on it because it plugs in right there. So I had to keep it off that, and I simply did that by using an extension or a long bolt with a piece of rubber hose on it. But outside of that, it all works pretty good. Cycle it again. I'm gonna run another cycle there. One, two, three, four. There it is. Two, three, four, and two wheel high. So we're good to go. A lot of work involved with this, with this particular application, so you, if you, if you don't have access to tools like that, or at least a drill press and a saw, I wouldn't uh, suggest putting the cable system on a ZJ. But um, I'd, I'd probably go with a, with a different mount, yeah. I mean, with a different setup than, than this one here. But we had a little, we had time on our hands. We don't drive this vehicle every day. So we were able to, to get it to work right. And I, I love the cable idea. It's just not, uh, just not good for the job. It might work great on a 4.0 uh, with like four inches of lift or six inches of lift where you actually drop the transmission down a little bit and that'll give you some more spread from here to here. It may work great on one of those applications, but the, the 5.9 is, um, it's, it's a real trial and error fitting process. And I bet you I took this thing on and off 50 times to, to get every angle right and to get it, you know, get it all locked down where it needed to be. So just keep that in mind. But we do like the way it shifts. It shifts so much more positive than it did originally. And uh, still happy with it, but it was, uh, it was a real challenge. I forgot to mention another thing we did with these rubber mounts, which I do like, but uh, because of the stress of pushing the cable, it's push-pull, this was giving us way too much movement. The transmission tunnel was flexing a lot. So we went ahead and flattened these grommet bolts, I'll call them for lack of a better term. We went ahead and flattened them out, tightened them up really tight, and then put the washers and the nuts behind that. That actually took all of the flex out of it because when you would change your, tra um, your, when you would shift it, this whole bracket would just, would just flex. You can see the floor here flexing and it was just uh, just moving all over the place, which, which didn't was not good for what we were trying to do because of the amount of resistance we had in this whole thing because of the tight radius and the bend we've got here in our cable this way. But also, I forgot to mention too, on this this arm right here that, that they give you has four holes in it. It's, well, they're connected, but four different slots. And the if you go all the way up to the top, let's put it this way. The farther this is up here, the more resistance it is to changing the gears. It's like leverage, like a wrench. The further down you get, the more leverage you have and it makes it shift a lot easier. In fact, the way I've got it right now, I kind of wish I had about another half inch on this lever to get it down here. That would make it shift even easier. So with the extension on that, and this one in the bottom hole is what worked for us. So, and we also put some really big washers on, on top of tightening these, these down a lot and putting a washer on them and putting a, I put a stainless steel nut on them, so, you know, why? We put really big washers on the top that grabbed almost the entire thing. It's almost like putting a backer plate on the back side of that to strengthen this whole area up so this thing doesn't move as much. But you saw how, how much, he, he didn't have to pull on it hard. It was a lot better in factory. So, anyhow. And here are the washers we had to use to get more surface area onto the sheet metal because it was flexing way too much not to put these bigger washers on there and tighten up the nuts. All right, my final thoughts on the Novak cable shifter conversion for the Grand Cherokee TJ. 
If I were to go back and do it again, I would not go with the Novak cable shifter. I would go with the Mountain Vista Fabrication or the Aussie from what I know. Everybody has really good luck or they're really happy with the Mountain Vista Fabrication because it's a one or two piece direct linkage. Um, very simple unit. And the Novak cable shifter conversion for the Grand Cherokee ZJ, I believe it's a fairly new system to Novak to put it on a ZJ. But it looks to be more suited for something that has like a 42 or 44 RH. I'm not sure if the um, housings are different between those and the 46 RH, but it seems to be more suited for a lifted ZJ. Yeah, I know, big surprise there, right? But um, <clears throat> it shifts well now that we've modified the bracketry and got the geometry right. But even at that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back with the Novak cable shifter. Not on, not on this Jeep, anyways. But if you had one of the three inch lift or more, looks it looks to be more well suited for that. But just know that um, in the grand or in the ZJ community, from what I've seen, the Mountain Vista fabrication seems to be the best transfer case linkage. I believe I'm the only person on YouTube yet to put a video out on the Novak cable shifter conversion for a Grand Cherokee ZJ. Anyways, if you enjoyed the input, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. We're gonna be doing a lot of work to a XJ here soon. See y'all next one.